Welcome to Shakespeare Full Circle, a journey of a circuitous nature into the mind of the Bard of Avon, or as you become more familiar, Uncle Will. I'm your host, Kari Marshall. Have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. The rule of law, rectitude, justice, reprisal, a reckoning, revenge. These words for some time now have come to be inextricably linked with our understanding of jurisprudence, as well as our feelings of right and wrong and proportionality. This is the question Uncle William explores in his play The Merchant of Venice, written between 1596 and 1599, with its first performance in 1605. It tells the story of Antonio, a merchant suffering from a common social ailment of the time, anti-Semitism, who takes a loan from the Jew Shylock to help his friend court our female protagonist, Portia. Antonio becomes unable to repay the loan, and without mercy, Shylock demands, as per his original agreement, a rather extraordinary condition. If you repay me not on such a day, in such a place, such a sum or sums as are expressed in the condition, let the forfeit be nominated for an equal pound of your fair flesh. Antonio frankly doesn't even consider that Shylock would be in earnest and proceeds to agree to the extreme requirement. When the loan comes due, however, Antonio finds himself unable to repay Shylock, and Portia, now the wife of Antonio's friend, dresses as a lawyer Balthazar, I mean, what would a Shakespeare play be without a bit of dress-up, and speaks to Shylock of the noble quality of mercy. But mercy is above this sceptred sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself, and earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. Shylock remains unmoved, and even though he is offered twice the sum of Antonio's debt, the lender demands that the terms of the deal be strictly adhered to. Shylock claims he wants justice, but it's clear that he is not interested in justice at all, but rather one of the darker aspects of our human psyche, revenge. Now, whether Uncle William was making a point about bigotry and prejudice, or whether we are viewing his words through our 21st century social lens, remains up for debate. What is clear, though, from the story, is that our moneylender has been inundated with anti-Semitic prejudice all his life, even referring to scathing comments by Antonio himself, in many ways, his extraordinary demands of the non-fulfillment of the contract seem to be a sort of built-in recompense for how Shylock himself has been treated. He hath disgraced me and hindered me half a million, laughed at my losses, mocked at my gains, scorned my nation, thwarted my bargains, cooled my friends, heated mine enemies, and what's his reason? I am a Jew! As we move forward through time, Shylock's pound of flesh has become freed from the specific instance of the play, and has come to mean a rather overtly extreme, if not spiteful, condition placed upon a person, heard in arguments made around the kitchen table to the inside of the White House briefing room. This is how it works. This is what a bill looks like when you have 60 votes in the Senate, when the Democrats get a chance to take their pound of flesh in order to defend the nation. In the play, Antonio's death is only prevented as Portia, as Balthazar, explains the bond is for the flesh, but not for a single drop of blood. Portia interprets the contract strictly, by the letter, making it impossible for Shylock to collect his prize. To put it another way, to coin another phrase, the devil, so it seems, was actually in the details. <laughs> Well, alas and alack, my friends, that's all we have time for. Join us again next time for another circuitous journey into the mind of Uncle William. I'm Kari Marshall. Farewell until next time. Today's clips were from Michael Radford's 2004 film adaptation starring Al Pacino, Jeremy Irons, and Lynn Collins. Shakespeare Full Circle is a production of WGTE Public Media. You can learn more and download all episodes at wgte.org slash sfc or wherever you get your podcasts.